In 1975, Reginald Rusty Rutherford wrote The Dungeon, a dungeon crawler emulating the rules of original edition Dungeons & Dragons. Rutherford's game was coded for the Plato Computer Assisted Instruction System, a national network of educational terminals based at the University of Illinois. Plato was not the internet. The internet didn't exist yet. But the nature of the system allowed anyone with access to a terminal to access content made at other terminals across the university and at other campuses. Like many other games created at the time, the dungeon was considered contraband, and if discovered would likely be deleted by system administrators. So to conceal its presence, Rutherford inserted it as the fifth program in the population and energy group of the Play-Doh file system, giving it the name we know today, PDIT-5. PDIT-5 was a pioneering role-playing game with rich, top-down vector graphics the likes of which wouldn't be surpassed until the 1980s. It saw the player travel as a solitary, randomly rolled warrior, navigating a 900-room dungeon populated with randomly placed enemies straight out of the monster manual. Players aimed to amass at least 20,000 experience points and as much treasure as possible before making it out of the dungeon alive to retire with honor and place in the Hall of Fame's top 10 scores. PDIT-5 was wildly popular with university students, and inspired numerous imitators that very same year, including D&D, Dungeon, and a multiplayer variant, Orthanc. PDIT-5 was supposed to have been a multiplayer game from the beginning, but the dungeon was repeatedly deleted upon discovery, which stalled development. So, inspired by the game's deletion, Paul Resch, Larry Kemp, and Eric Hagstrom collaborated to create Orthanc as a multiplayer dungeon crawler directly inspired by PDIT-5. Orthanc allowed for tens of thousands of users, each with their own characters, and the number of active users was only restricted by the number of active Play-Doh terminals the game could be accessed from, which by 1975 was about a thousand individual screens and keyboards. The Orthanc dungeon went ten floors deep, and while players couldn't ally with one another in parties, they could stop to chat, work together to take down monsters, or even kill one another and steal their inventory. Resch, Kemp, and Hagstrom couldn't have known it then, but they had created a template that would one day connect millions of people around the Earth. A multiplayer online role-playing game, or MORPG. And while player killing was fairly common, many players would simply hang out in the dungeon together chatting rather than actually playing, even though they could do that anywhere on Plato. They chose Orthanc as their place to chat because it was a familiar environment, not unlike how players of later online games would stand around shooting the breeze instead of raiding or going on quests together. Other Plato based MORPGs like Moria and Obliette would innovate upon Orthanc's concepts with player parties of up to 10, group chat, persistent worlds and multiple dungeons, and even chase items like Moria's Reaper's Ring that warped down to a random position on a lower floor every time a player found it. While the RPGs of the Plato era would later inspire the home computer games Wizardry, Ultima, and Rogue, these online games ended up largely disconnected from their legacy. Play-Doh was relatively widespread for the standards of its day, but never reached the kind of omnipresence general purpose home computers did, and so the next time players would be connected online through a role-playing game, it came through a system made without any knowledge of Orthanc or Moria. Multi-User Dungeon 1, better known as MUD1. MUD1 was created in 1978 by Roy Trebshaw and Richard Bartle at the University of Essex. It was modeled on the text adventure game Zork, but with support for multiple players on the same network to exist in the rooms of the dungeon simultaneously. By the time its third version was completed in 1980, that network was ARPANET, the Advanced Research Projects Agency Network, which was the predecessor to the internet. Over several years, this text-only role-playing system began to spread alongside ARPANET itself, and as public network infrastructure began to enter business and personal use in the late 1980s, other systems imitating or repurposing MUD1 followed. The most popular of these was ABERMUD, created as an open-source MUD at the University of Wales in 1987. Being open-source meant ABERMUD could easily be studied and repurposed by other developers, and that gave rise to the most triumphant multi-user dungeon of all, the one that formulated the template for just about every online RPG today. Deku Mud. Published in 1991, Deku's main claim to fame was its hack-and-slash gameplay that prioritized combat over all else, simplifying the complex role-playing of past MUDs down to the easily understandable statistics and combat roles of Dungeons & Dragons. It was in Deku Mud that the holy trinity of online RPGs was first born. The tank, the healer, 
And the stone skin caster? Yes, while Dikumed may have been responsible for creating the Holy Trinity, not everything was set in stone to begin with. The original third role in the Holy Trinity was a caster whose primary job was to cast stone skin on other party members to turn them into more effective tanks. Over time, as more Deku Muds began to advance, and later online games inspired by them came out, the role of the stone skin caster began to shift to an offensive one known as the Nuker, responsible for casting area of effect spells, and that eventually morphed into the damage per second or DPS. In the Holy Trinity, the tank drew the attention of mobile units, or mobs, using abilities that would force them to target the tank instead of the other party members, while the healer healed the damage the tank was soaking up, and the DPS on the tank wore the enemies down. All three party members had to coordinate to avoid accidentally turning the mob's attention to the DPS or the healer, because either of them going down would spell the beginning of the end for their party. Coordinating effectively would result in the mobs being cleared from the current room the party was in, them gaining experience points, leveling up, and collecting loot to grow stronger. Although Deku Muds eventually came under fire for their simplified gameplay, they were immensely popular and became social nodes for players to connect through. It was Deku that introduced the concept of raiding to MORPGs, with high-level bosses supported by elite minions that players worked together to bring down for rare drops and valuables. In many Deku Muds, players would drop some or all of their equipment upon being slain, and if a high-level party wiped against a particularly strong boss, it could trigger a server wide panic as players scrambled to find and loot the corpses before a server crash or reset could wipe the items away. Deku Mud was not just a single game, but an entire standard that could be easily copied and repurposed to create more MUDs with the same combat-focused template. This is how the world ended up with the 1993 Sojourn Mud, its 96 derivative Toro Mud, and numerous others. This standard was ultimately adopted by EverQuest in 1996, but before we get to that there's another important step between them. See, in 1991, the internet was in a fledgling state. It was not recognizable as the internet we know today. The internet we interact with now is experienced through web browsers, which weren't popularized until Mosaic and later Internet Explorer came out in 1993 and 95. The browser-based internet is defined by hypertext markup language, or HTML, and cascading style sheets, CSS, which came about in 93 and 96 and defined the visual properties of the web pages we browse. For most users, that wasn't going on in 91. Instead, people were connecting to bulletin board systems and signing up for email addresses for the first time. The only provider of email until 1994 was America Online, which at the time was an independent company and not just a marketing brand of Verizon. AOL charged its users $5 to $10 an hour for internet connectivity, which resulted in people rapidly opening their client programs, downloading their email, and then quickly disconnecting from the internet to read their mail offline before typing up their message, reconnecting, sending it, and disconnecting again, all to minimize their bill. AOL tried to devise services that would keep its users connected to the internet for longer to stretch those bills out, and one of those services was Neverwinter Nights, the first graphical multi-user dungeon. Neverwinter Nights licensed the likeness and systems of Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, and was built using the same engine from the Gold Box series of single-player PC D&D games. Instead of controlling an entire party of characters, players controlled a single character that could voluntarily join a party, allowing the party leader to move the whole group around the map, but with each member controlling their characters in turn-based battles. By any modern standard, and even the standards of Deku Mud, Neverwinter Nights was a mess. Because it was based on original advanced D&D, there were strict level, race, and class restrictions. The level cap could be reached in about an hour by power leveling against griffins, the only rare drops to speak of were plus three items found randomly from Draco Liches, and you were paying like 30 to $50 a day to play. But none of its shortcomings really mattered, because it was the first graphical multiplayer online role-playing game, and being the first counted for a lot in 1991. Players racked up enormous bills playing Neverwinter, and they racked up enormous bills waiting to play Neverwinter because the server was hardcapped at 50, later 200, 500, and eventually 2,000 simultaneous players. But there were more than 100,000 people trying to get in every night, the game had guilds players could join, quests that were constantly being added, and thanks to a glitch, a crude and very unbalanced form of player versus player battling, where players could duke it out with magic but not melee. They weren't really supposed to but AOL tolerated it and eventually limited it to specific zones to keep things under control. Ultimately, Neverwinter Nights closed down in 1997 after disagreements between AOL and the other companies involved, TSR and SSI. 
But by that time, players had something much more engaging to draw their attention. The first massively multiplayer online role-playing games. 